Hello my fellow YouTubers. Welcome to another episode of Develop with WP. My name is Bobby Bryant and today we're going to continue on our series on how to build a WordPress plugin. Uh, in today's video specifically, we're going to build on our knowledge that we've been accumulating so far and we're going to see how to use WordPress action hooks in action. That's the best way I can put it. So let's get started. Um, to give you some examples of how action hooks work, um, I want to do some somewhat neat, I think somewhat neat stuff. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit or we're going to change how this dashboard is displayed. Um, one of the things, what we're going to do is we're going to remove this WordPress news uh, meta box from the dashboard. Uh, I don't know, let's just say we want to declutter the dashboard. You know, that seems to be a common uh, trend amongst people these days. So that's what we're going to do in this series. That's the first thing we're going to do. So let's get started. Uh, you'll remember this from the previous uh, episode when we were doing our um, basic overview. I'm going to change up some of this. All right, so I'm going to rename our function. So we're going to call this uh, DWP DWP action hook example. So one of the first things I want to point out that we didn't cover in the last video is this DWWP. So in this instance, what this stands for is develop with WordPress and what it's commonly referred to as prefixing. Um, if you're going to be creating functions in WordPress, it's important that you prefix your functions. And the main reason you want to prefix your functions is because um, you don't want to have what are called collisions where you've called a function, for example, action hook, say you did a function called this action hook example. Well, there's there's likely that there's another um, part of WordPress that could call the same thing. And the reason this is a really big issue in WordPress is because most WordPress sites are built of a theme and as many as 20, 30, 40 different plugins. And with all those different pieces of code built by different developers, there's always a good chance that you and another person name something similar. So to avoid this, generally you will prefix it with something that's unique to your plugin or theme. Uh, you know, in this series, you'll see that I'm just going to use the develop with WordPress prefix. You'll be using something different, I'm sure. But that's the first thing that I want to point out. All right, so we want to remove this, um, this widget. And you know, I'm actually going to change this to be more, uh, more descriptive to what we're actually doing. All right, so we're going to remove a dashboard widget. So that's why we're going to, we want our name to be somewhat descriptive. So the function that we're going to use to, to do this is called uh, remove meta box. All right, and before, you know, I just go in here and put the stuff, let's look that up. Let's go to the codex. The codex is our friend, I think. You know, I'm still learning, but like, uh, I can't I can't tell you how often when I first you know was starting with uh, developing in WordPress like everybody would say WordPress the Codex is your friend you know go the go to the Codex for all your answers and I would go to the Codex and I'm like I have no clue what this thing is telling me so uh, I've gotten beyond that and hopefully if you're in that boat um, you know what I show you today will help so if we look at this we see that there are three parameters that we can pass in an ID a page and context. And if we look in this particular example, each one of them is required. That's always something that's good to look at. Look and see what's required. Um, a lot of times there will be optional stuff. And, and sure, sometimes you'll need that optional stuff, but a lot of times you don't. Okay, so for this one, we need three things. The first thing we need is an ID. So we need the ID of the HTML element to be removed. So in this example, um, the element to be removed is called is called dashboard primary. And the next thing to add, if we go back to the codex, um, is the page. So as you can see right here, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's 
put in as a string and examples are post, page, attachment. So what type of uh, post type is this? In this case, it's on the dashboard. So the page in this example is dashboard. So we'll go back to our code and we'll put dashboard. And then the last, last one was context, normal advanced side. So what this is talking about, this is really more referring to um, a post edit screen. Uh, when you get to creating meta boxes and stuff like that, which we will do in this series, you can, there's different locations on a post edit screen and the way you um, target those areas is based on this thing called normal advanced inside. In our situation here working with the dashboard, that's actually not valid. What we need to know is, um, we still need to know where it's at on the page, but those, those references don't work here. Here it's more of a column type layout. So we're going to have to target this slightly differently. And this one is in what's called post container um, underscore one. So that's where this one, this meta box is located on the page. So first we gave it which meta box, then we gave it what kind of a page is it on, and then we said on that page which section is it in. And now we're going to get to our hook, which is kind of what this video is about. Again, I, I covered most of it in the last series. There's only two main parameters required. The first is the hook. Um, so we want WordPress to execute this when it's when it loads the dashboard. And if we go look and look look at all the hooks, there's one called WP underscore dashboard um, setup. So when WordPress goes to build the dashboard, we want it to execute our code. And then the next parameter is the function to be added, which in, is just a cool way of saying your function that you're creating. So we'll add in that DWP remove dashboard widget. All right, so we'll save this. Um, I have horrible luck with coding on video and it working the first time. But when I refresh this now, let me actually double check that my plugin is active. It is active. When I refresh this now, this news meta box should disappear. And like I predicted, it did not. Oh, dashboard board. <laughs> so um, dashboard set up. All right, let's try it again. There you go. See, now you can see that the news meta box has disappeared. And that was a perfect example of how, you know, the power of a hook. You know, I didn't have an actual real hook at first, and it didn't do anything. Now, and it's really neat to note that it didn't give me any errors. I have debug on, and it didn't even give me any, like, non-critical errors. It just totally, when WordPress got to that function, it just completely acted like it didn't exist, because in its eyes, it didn't. Um, so that's the power of hooks, right? You can create functions all day long, but if you don't use an add action or an add filter and tell WordPress to use it, it just ignores it. So that's a good lesson in my, that's a good lesson in my inability to code on the first try, but it's also a good lesson in how WordPress works. All right, so let's do something else. Um, you know, we're having so much fun. <laughs> let's do another one. In this example, what we're going to do is we're going to add a Google Analytics link here in this admin bar that'll take your take you to Google Analytics. Uh, it's a small thing. It's not really a big deal, but I think it's just another good example of using an action. Um, and who knows, you know, it's just when you're working on client sites, anytime you can customize the admin area to make it just feel more tailored to them and user friendly, uh, I think it's a win-win. So let's, let's get started. Uh, so again, we're going to create our shell, uh, our pattern that's in our WordPress, you know, development pattern. So first thing we do is, to, is outline our function, then we do our add action. All right, so let's get to building this. Um, so the first thing we need to do here is we actually need to define a global variable. WordPress has a number of global variables that are available to us. Um, this is one of them. 
WP admin bar. Uh, and then what I want to do is I'm going to do something called a var dump. And what this is going to do is it's going to print out everything that's in this uh, WP admin bar object so that we can see it on the screen. So let's go and see this. All right, so I was wondering about that. Let's go ahead and just add our action. So in this example, um, we are going to use a hook called WP before admin bar render. So again, we're, we're hooking into this before WordPress renders the admin bar so that we can add our content to it. Um, if, if we didn't do it at this initial, at this point, then uh, it wouldn't get added at the proper time. And then the next part again is our function to be added. All right, let's save this. Let's go try this again. All right, so here you see it. What this is doing is it's this WP admin bar object has um, a whole bunch of menu items. And so as you, you can see them all printed out here. And what we're going to do is we're gonna use a function called add menu to append our menu item to this object so that it now exists. Um, one of the cool things I wanna show you is if you look on here, this one's called, it has an ID and a title, uh, a lot of stuff that we're gonna to add to ours. And you'll see this one's called edit my profile, which you can see exists here. Then you'll see there's a logout button. And if we look down here, here's the logout button menu item. And so I just think it's really neat that you can see this stuff. Uh, this will become more valuable later on too when we get into more advanced development to be able to see what these objects and variables actually consist of as we're working on them. We're, we're going to help clear up some of the mystery, I hope. All right, so let's go back to our code. And what, first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this var dump, and we're going to continue with our code. Um, if we look up WP admin bar in the codex, All right, we'll see that we'll see this object um, and all the stuff it exists of and here's some cool methods that we can use on it and the one we're going to use is add menu so and this adds an item into the admin bar that sounds exactly like what we need if we look on here we'll see the example WP admin bar add menu and then the args and if we scroll down we can see a lot of these args and again we want to look and see which ones are optional and which ones are required uh, technically only an ID is required, but we're going to, in this example, add a few more optional arguments. So let's code this out. All right. In the example, they create their args, so like we could, I mean, there's a couple ways to do this, you know, since this is kind of a beginning tutorial, I'll just cover this. You could pass in args, and then up here you could define args. And this is actually something that I do on a regular basis. Um, and then we could define all of our args within an array and whatnot. But what we're going to do in this example is, it doesn't really matter how you get them in there. So in this example, we're going to put in an array inside of pass the array in here. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. All right. So we saw that in the codex that the ID... Uh, is required. So we're going to create an ID and we're going to make that ID equal to um, a computer readable name. All right, and then the next top, next item we're going to put is a title. And this is just going to be what's the human readable name, like what gets displayed in the admin bar. What do we want this thing to say? It could say whatever we want it to say. And then the last thing we're going to do, because we want this to be a link, you'll see, if you look at the codex, there's an href parameter that you can pass into the arguments. So we're going to pass that in. All right, and then uh, so this is an, this is what's called an associative array where we have. You know, kind of like a key and then a value. Uh, I think, you know, again, I'm not up on my 
developer terminology per se, but kind of like it within JavaScript, this would be like, or in JSON, it's a key valued pair. Uh, but, you know, we're going to, in for us, in our example, we're just going to refer to this as an associative array. Uh, this is something we're going to be doing a lot. Uh, so I kind of want to get some, you know, common terminology out there about what these things are. So, okay. So here we have, we have the WP admin bar object or variable, and then we're add, we're calling an add menu method on that. And then that menu, add menu is taking some arguments and we've set our arguments up. So now let's go back, we've saved our document. Let's go back to our dashboard and refresh. When we refresh, uh, this var dump should go away and up here right beside new, our um, Google Analytics link should show up. And there you go, there's our Google Analytics link. We click on it, it takes us to Google Analytics. Uh, you know, it's a small thing. Um, but it's the small things, right? It's the small things in life. So let's just do a quick recap. Um, really what we did in this video was we showed just two examples of how to use an add action. Or, uh, you know, we covered it in the last video, like basically how to lay out this, uh, this programming pattern. But I, what I wanted to do was give you some real world example, real world examples of, you know, some somewhat neat stuff that you could do with actions. Um, in the next video, we're going to cover this. We're going to do the same thing, but in that video, we're actually going to cover filters, which are you know slightly different. Um, actually, it's funny how similar they are, but they are slightly different um, in the next video. So again, thanks for watching this video. Um, I appreciate you watching it. Uh, if you like the video, please you know subscribe to this channel, share it, like it, uh, let your friends know about it. Uh, we really appreciate any help that we can get. Um, uh, like I always say, this 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 YouTube channel is about the community and helping other developers uh, become better developers. Uh, so if you have any questions, any questions at all about the code, uh, please put them in the comments and I'll do my best to try and answer, answer them. Uh, I really enjoy the comments section and getting to interact with uh, the viewers that are watching the video. So, you know, don't, don't hesitate to, to drop in a comment. Um, so yeah, uh, again, thanks and I'll see you in the next video.